what is going on? Welcome into episode one of the free agency preview series, where we're going to be taking a look at different high profile free agents that are set at the open market in uh, what is it? Yeah, less than two weeks now. Okay, so it's quickly approaching. And uh, as we all know, the New York Jets kind of sucks, but the New York Jets have a ton of holes, right? Cornerback, offensive line, edge rusher, etc. We have a lot of backup quarterback, right? We have a lot of holes that we need to address this offseason. But thankfully for us, we have a brand new general manager, really high, really highly regarded around the league. Okay, Joe Douglas coming in from Philly, and the I mean the Jets don't have a substantial amount of cap space, but we have a decent amount, right? Uh, more than average. We're set to make some moves. Okay, the Jets will be making some moves to improve this team, right? We're we're not going to be. I really highly doubt that this team is going to just stand pat and just let free agent after free agent after free agent just pass the Jets by. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Douglas has his eye on a couple different guys, and uh, he's going to be aggressive. Um, you know, kind of chasing those guys and trying to get them in the green and white. So. Let's kind of talk about some of these guys. Episode one, we're going to be talking about Byron Jones, a cornerback from the Dallas Cowboys. When you look at Jones, and really him as a player overall, he's a lengthy, tall cornerback. Blew the combine away, physical freak, right? I think he's six foot one. I think he ran a four. Uh, four three five forty. I could be mistaken on that. Back at the combine, and I remember he had it like an. Ins- I think it was either uh, a vertical jump or a broad jump. I can't really remember, but I just know it. I just remember it kind of took the internet by storm, and that's really when his uh, stock started soaring up because he was a safety slash corner, like versatile kind of DB at UConn, and um, he wasn't really highly reg- – like he wasn't th- thought of as a first-round pick. Combine happened, and then boom, the Cowboys take him 27th overall, uh, I believe back in the 2015 draft. So when you look at Byron Jones, what does he bring to the table? He brings athleticism. He brings experience covering number one wide receivers. I mean, his job with Dallas was to cover number one guys, right? Guys like Mike Evans, guys like Julio Jones. Um, Granted, the NFC East doesn't really have any major, major threats to the wide receiver position. I guess you can kind of make an argument Alshon Jeffrey and, of course, Amari Cooper. But, you know, they play on the same team, obviously. But Byron Jones, man, he's covered. He's been on an island with some of the best receivers around the league, right? And he's and he's he's matched up. He's held his own. He's, he's not getting killed. He's not getting burned out there every single Sunday. There's a reason why this guy's the number one cornerback set at the open market. So he also brings a little bit of versatility. Like I said, he played safety in the NFL and was a decent player. They transitioned him to cornerback, and the first year playing cornerback, he makes the Pro Bowl. So this guy can obviously play ball. He's obviously you know, a, a highly competitive player as well. So you're looking at all these different positive traits, competitive, versatile, athletic. This is going to be a valuable piece come, you know, in come early March or mid-March, whatever it is, March 18th. He's going to have a lot of suitors. And the, the top three favorites right now, like the, the, the favorable landing destinations, are the New York Jets, the New York Giants, and the Philadelphia Eagles. I think right now the Eagles have the best, like, odds of, of landing Jones. Uh, but we'll see what happens. So... When I look at Jones and how he would fit with this Jets team, obviously the Jets need cornerbacks desperately. Okay, desperately. We all know this. The safety position, we're good. We're solid. Jamal Adams, best safety in the league. If you hate Jamal Adams, the lowest he can possibly go is is top three. Okay, so we're, we're fine at strong safety. Marcus May, really good player. Kind of getting up there in age, as crazy as that might sound. I think he's 27 or 28 years old. Spent a lot of time at UF. That's why he's, you know, so much older than like a Jamal Adams who's 23, 24. Um, We're we're, we're set at safety. Okay, we don't have to worry about that position. But cornerbacks on the other end, or on the other hand, rather, that's a different story. Okay, that is a different story. We had guys like Blession Austin playing, guys like Nate Harrison playing. We had guys like Trumaine Johnson getting paid, I think, 12 or $13 million last season being benched like a healthy bench, right? Just like a healthy scratch, right? He was not even playing in games. He was getting outplayed by sixth round, you know, late round guys, random guys that we just, you know, we gave uh, the Colts a sixth round pick, a conditional sixth round pick for Nate Harrison. And he comes in and he's starting over one of the highest paid cornerbacks in the league in Shumane Johnson. Johnson didn't work out. That's another story though. It's another video. I actually posted a video on it uh, yesterday re- re- kind of regarding that matter. But uh, you know, who else at the who do, who else do we really have at the position? Dale Roberts is set to hit the open market. He's been, you know, he's taking a lot of snaps for this Jets team. Bottom line is 
this Jets squad needs corners. We just need bodies. We have some talent on the defensive side of the football, right? Corner zones. Like I said before, Jamal Adams, Marcus May can play. We have C.J. Mosley coming back. We have Quinn Williams, third overall pick, best player in last year's draft. So we have some talent. It's not like we're the 32nd ranked defense, the 31st ranked defense. Greg Williams has now a year under his belt with this team. We're all going into year two with the same defense. We got to play our cards right. We got to add bodies to this cornerback room. So it begs the question, is Byron Jones a candidate for that? Should he be Should he be on the Jets' top priority list? I'm going to say no. Okay, and yes. All of, all of those traits, and I'm not taking anything away from Byron Jones, all of his traits that he possesses are, are great, right? Who doesn't want an athletic cornerback who's physical, who wraps up an open field, who can play safety if you need him to, who, who you know can play on an island? He's a very good player. He's a really good player. But from for, for his asking price right now, the latest I've seen was 14 to $16 million for, for Jones. And you can make the argument, I'm not going to sit here and be and you know lie to you guys. I could be a little biased I, because I do have scars, right? I have scars from signing Trumaine Johnson. A very, very, very similar case study when you look at it. Trumaine Johnson is an athletic guy who has range, who has speed, who has height, who has a lot of potential, you know, made some plays with St. Louis here and there, made some plays with the LA Rams, actually played with Greg Williams, never was the best cornerback in the league, never was the top three cornerback in the league, never was a top five corner. You can make an argument, right, he's maybe cornerback ranked like 10, 9, at the very most, eight, right? I'm talking back with his days with the Rams. He's one of the worst in the league now as of, you know, um, when you watch his production compared to his pay. Byron Jones is kind of, I don't want to say they're the same player because I think a lot of what had to do with Tremaine's downfall with the Jets is attitude, mental, um, you know, mental, just focus, being in the game, just being locked in. A lot You see that from time to time throughout the course of history of the league. Players just getting paid and then quitting pretty much, just, eh, just mailing it in. I'm not comparing those two, men, um, you know, from that side of it, but from a physical aspect, when has Byron Jones ever been considered a top five cornerback? I can't even remember. You can say, I've seen, you know, a couple different lists here and there. You know, Cowboys fans obviously love the guy because he's a good player for them. You can say he's a top 10 cornerback, for sure. For sure he's a top 10 corner. But when or, whenever, when really has he ever been considered like, oh, Jones, top three cornerback, easy. Top five cornerback, like, that's a joke. He's obviously in there every year. You can count him in there every single season. Never. And are the Jets willing to pay Am I willing to pay a guy who's not even considered a top five cornerback in this league? Top dollar. Top dollar. When, even if we get a Byron Jones, we still have to figure out what's going on with cornerback two, with cornerback three, with cornerback four. Last season, we got decimated with injuries. Another guy who I didn't even bring up is Brian Poole. He had a solid, solid season for us last season. Last year, right? Slot corner. He's set to hit the, he's set to hit the, the uh, free agency market as well. So we have a ton we have a ton of vacancies at the cornerback position. Do we want to drop all that cash on one guy? Yes, he could come in and take pressure off of Adams in, in the secondary and kind of be that security blanket for Greg Williams. Uh, you know, you take a look at the division. We don't really have any major major threats. Miami, you know, they signed Devontae Parker. I kind of view view him as a number two. Buffalo. They, I'm, I'm thinking they might try to target in, in uh, like an Amari Cooper, maybe a T. Higgins or a Henry Ruggs if, if he kind of falls in the draft. Pa- New England Patriots, they don't really have any, you know, solid, solid number one wide receivers. I do like Nikhil Harry a lot. So as far as, you know, as, as far as the, the division goes, we don't really have the need for a number one lockdown corner. Do we want to invest $14 million? And a guy who's not even considered a top five cornerback when we already did that with Tremaine Johnson. And granted, it was two separate GMs and they're two separate players coming from two separate systems. But I do have the scars. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys. Like I said before, I do have the scars of signing Johnson. That's a lot. We have to pay Tremaine Johnson a ton of money this season. He's not even going to be on the team. We have to pay him 10 plus million dollars this season. 
We're only saving three million dollars. That's that's a that's a ton of cash. Okay, that's just gone. It's just gone in the wind. So my best bet or my proposal to the Jets, and by the way, even though I'm not in favor of signing a Byron Jones, it doesn't really mean I'm I would be pissed or I'd be upset or I'd be angry if we did sign him because at the end of the day we're getting a number one corner who's gonna come in and lock down or do his best to lock down number one wide receivers. If Marcus May goes down, we could throw him out, out there to free safety. He's a very good player. He's going to upgrade the defense tremendously. I'm not going to be pissed in the least, right? He's a major, major upgrade. I'm going to support him. I'm going to be his biggest fan. But I'll say this. If I was the Jets, instead of spending 12 13 14 $15 million on one cornerback, I would much prefer us to bring in a guy bring uh guys in in the building like Brian Poole re-sign him maybe split that money up a little bit and bring in guys that might cost a little bit less like a Daryl Worley like a James Bradbury like a Logan Ryan okay what's going to happen with Malcolm Butler is he going to be cut from Tennessee maybe a guy like Bradley Roby yes these guys aren't number one lockdown corners these guys aren't Jalen Ramsey. These guys aren't Richard Sermon. These guys aren't Darrell Revis. But these guys can play. These guys are starters. These guys have seen a lot of action. They've seen a lot of snaps. They've been in different defenses. I think that's the route that we should go. Because we saw it time after time after time last season. Quarterbacks just kind of spreading the football all around. Just kind of avoiding Jamal Adams, right? Throwing the opposite direction of uh of ja right we i think we just need to get bodies in the room as it pertains to the cornerback position so to kind of wrap it up here 12 minute video so i thank you guys for sticking sticking with me here my overall take on byron jones is this if i was joe douglas you got to make the call see what's good with him see how much he's looking for see how much exactly he him and his agent and his family are looking for test the market what teams are offering because the last thing you want to do if you're the New York Jets is get in a bidding war for Byron Jones who's not a top five corner in this league all of a sudden this guy could be the highest paid cornerback when it's all said and done and yes Byron Jones does pre present a very high ceiling a ton of potential and the kind of the the thought process is or the the hypothesis is for for Jones is that he's not playing at his best football right now. He's only going to get better. And that was kind of the same kind of thing with Tremaine Johnson. Like, okay, he's still kind of in his prime. He's yet to really fall, like click in the gear and get going. Tremaine just never really panned out. Byron Jones could possibly still do that, right? If the if the uh, Eagles do in fact sign him and he's in number one corner, you're going to have a lot of Jets fans out there say, oh my God, we should have got this guy. What the hell? You know, what what's going on here? Um, and that's all well and good, you know, but it comes down to the, the simple question. Are the New York Jets willing to pay cornerback one money, right? The best cornerback in the league, that top dollar for corner, for maybe a top eight corner? That's the question. If it's worth it for Greg Williams, if it's worth it for Adam Gase, if it's worth it for Joe Douglas, if it's worth it for the overall um, uh, stature of the defense, then do it. But if it's not, then don't pay the top dollar. So my overall take, just come, kind of, like I said, wrap it all up, sum it all up. If I was Joe Douglas, I would make the call. I'd see see what he wants. I would kind of test the test the market, like, you know, look around, look, look kind of see the teams that are offering the contract, have a set price for him. If he doesn't want that number, then you're out. And then you start kind of dispersing the money elsewhere. O-line, edge rusher, cornerback, backup QB, whatever it is, running back possibly. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, that said, if we do sign Byron Jones as soon as free agency opens, whatever the case is, two days, three days in, and we sign Byron Jones and we didn't really make any other moves, I'd say, hey, we got a number one cornerback in the building, cornerback rather, Probably, and, and remember, this division is stacked with quarterbacks. You have Stephon Gilmore. You have Tredavious White. Okay, you have Xavier Howard down there in Miami. This is pre-draft, too. So the Jets got to get their cornerback game right. If I'm Joe Douglas, seeing what's up with him, if he's not really down for that set price, I'd maybe give a little bit of leadway, but not not so much. I'm not giving a huge leash out, leash out for him unless they're 100% convinced that he's going to be getting better with time and in Williams' system, he's a perfect system fit. 
But I think I would rather spend the money on guys like Daryl Worley, Brian Poole, Bradley Roby, Logan Ryan, James Bradbury, guys of that nature. Maybe not tier one corners, but tier two to tier three and just get bodies in the room because we got torched last season. Other quarterbacks torched us and it wasn't just the Tom Brady's of the world. I mean, you look back, Andy Dalton did his thing. Ryan Fitzpatrick did his thing. Carson Wentz did his thing. We got Baker Mayfield did his thing week two. Saw that game in person. It was a bloodbath. We got torched. Okay, we got to limit that. We got to get bodies in the room. We got to get depth. We got to add versatility. We got to get young at the position. We just got to get players, right? We got to get cornerbacks. I don't necessarily think putting all of our, um, you know, all of our, I don't even, I don't even know what the expression is. All the things in in one basket, pushing all the cards in the middle of the table, or all the chips in the middle of the table on one guy is going to solve all the issues for this Jets team. So it's kind of my thoughts. If we sign him, fantastic. I love it. Um, Major upgrade. But he's not going to be the first priority of the team. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And as always, thanks so much for watching and go Jets.